This episode of Take Facts is sponsored by Alphabet, the world's first supplement line for STEM students. Hi, I'm Johnny Johnny Cakes, and I got a PhD in supplemental science from the University of Wapayas. It's me at graduation, my mum was so proud. I made Alpha Ray out of the smartest sounding compounds money can buy. Think you likes, study cellic acid, Alpha Sigma Theta Gamma Sin. Then we grind it all down, put it in a big sack, put it in a sandwich press for a couple hours, and put it in pills and chip it off the stores near you. Listen, kids, it'll make your brain hard. They'll be acing all your subjects chemistry, physics, engineering, biology. And that's not all. You'll be remembering all sorts of crazy nonsense. Birthdays, bar mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs, uh, uh, I mean bat mitzvahs. <laughs> this is your brain before Alpha Ray. This is it after. I don't know what the difference is, but the colours are nice. We even interviewed a chemistry guy. What do you say, science man? Wait, I'm a physicist. And what are you doing in my house? And that's a wrap. Thanks, everybody. Alpha Ray. Cram it down, you meatbags. Right then, let's get the pedantic stuff out of the way. For those of you spitting Earl Grey at your screens and outrage at my Yankified video title, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. Sulfur, that's S-U-L-F-U-R, has been the standardised name of Element 16 since 1990. And while most academics in the UK didn't care at the time, they were forced to change their tune after most British chemistry journals tightened their nomenclature rules in the 2000s. Basically every textbook, journal article, and chemistry exam paper printed in Britain in the last 15 years spells sulfur with an F. So yeah, guess we can give the Americans a win on that one. Might help distract them from their less historically successful endeavours, like competing for the World Cup or withdrawing from the Middle East. Sulphur is the second of the group 16 elements, and is one of the few solid elements that can be found in its pure form in nature. Elemental sulphur can be found near volcanoes and geothermal springs, and was associated in biblical times with the devil. The Book of Revelations mentions a lake of fire and brimstone, an archaic name for sulphur, a place where the wicked shall be cast down on judgement day to suffer for all eternity. Wait, so an inhospitable hell escape parted by a river of molten sludge where neither man nor beast can live that begins with an H and ends with an L and oh my Christ the Christian underworld is in all. <laughs> Sulfur dioxide, a compound I mentioned in the previous episode, is the gas responsible for the smell of burnt matches. But when it builds up in the atmosphere, it's horrifically bad for the environment. Sulfur dioxide exists as a trace gas in the air, but it's emitted in large quantities by volcanic eruptions. Almost all of the volcanoes on Earth are underwater, and most of the active ones above sea level are fairly safe if you keep your distance. But should one of those volcanoes decide to erupt, things get a little complicated. There are several different types of volcanic eruption, some significantly more dangerous than others. Hawaiian eruptions, for instance, can barely be classified as eruptions at all. Lazy burps of lava that dribble their way down the rock face like porridge down the face of a fussy baby. But Plinian eruptions, the one that most people imagine when you mention volcanoes, are another story. Violent, continent-shaking explosions that rocket tons of ash and rock into the upper atmosphere. The name Plinian is an homage to Pliny the Younger, whose letters are a primary source for the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. In 79 AD, Vesuvius shook the continent with a cataclysmic explosion, releasing 100,000 times the thermal energy of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Molten rock and superheated gas were pushed miles into the stratosphere, rising higher and higher on a fireball of blazing air that could be seen from space. But eventually, the air currents cooled, giving way to an enormous deadly avalanche of blazing ash called a pyroclastic flow. The Roman cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum were destroyed. Tens of thousands of people lay dead under a six-foot blanket of ash and debris. To the Romans, recovery seemed hopeless, but preservation attempts by archaeologists have brought Pompeii and Herculaneum back to life. Italian archaeologists realised that strange imprints in the ash were actually cavities left from the bodies of the victims. These cavities could then be filled with plaster of Paris, which when dried, produced full-scale replicas of the victims' bodies. But the ash also preserved buildings, and perhaps most entertainingly, the Latin graffiti scribbled on the walls. So, why don't we read some? I don't want to sell my husband, not for all the gold in the world. I could caress Venus's ribs with a stick and whip her buttocks with a switch. Oh my god. The finances officer is the Emperor Nero that says this food is poison. I have had gay sex! Similar to its little sister Oxygen, sulphur is a component in an enormous number of compounds, far too many to cover in one video. For example, there's iron sulphide, known to mineralogists as pyrite, is the main component of fool's gold. Or what about hydrogen sulphide, a colourless gas that smells of eggy farts? 
But if you asked a random person on the street to name a sulfur compound off the top of their heads, my money is that they would say sulfuric acid. I mean, I assume so. I've been working on a thesis for the last year. The only human being I've spoken to outside of labs is the guy that drops off my pizzas. Under standard conditions, sulfuric acid is a colourless, highly corrosive liquid. Definitely not the sort of stuff you want to put on your cornflakes. But I don't think I'm over-exaggerating when I say that sulfuric acid is possibly one of the most useful compounds in the history of chemistry. Sulfuric acid is used to make fertilisers, batteries, insecticides, pharmaceuticals, plastics, paper, and basically everything else. In fact, it's such an important compound, the sulfuric acid production of an industrialised nation is one of the most reliable signifiers in economics of that country's technological development. Sulfuric acid is usually made through the contact process, which in simplified terms is the reaction of sulfur dioxide and oxygen gas over a vanadium oxide catalyst to make sulfur trioxide, which then forms sulfuric acid on exposure to water vapour. Liter by liter, the contact process produces more chemical product than any other industrial process on the face of the planet, and is absolutely essential to the functioning of modern society. But not everything about sulfuric acid's chemistry is quite so nice. See, there's these things you have called eyes, and if sulfuric acid comes into contact with them, it'll decompose the proteins inside them into watery flesh-coloured sludge. Now, first of all, if you wear PPE and didn't eat too many crayons as a child, you'll probably be fine to work with sulfuric acid. In fact, I remember being faintly underwhelmed with it when I was first allowed to work with it as a teenager, not realising the acid solutions given to high school students are usually about as strong as a drop of Ribena in the Adriatic Sea. Incidentally, you remember sulfur dioxide? Well, one of the main reasons it's so bad for the environment is it reacts with water vapour in the air to make acid rain. Droplets of dilute sulfuric acid that rain down from the heavens to cause all sorts of environmental horrors, namely eroding limestone buildings and killing plants by reacting with nutrients in the soil. Sulfur is definitely one of the most important elements on Earth, and probably the most important one we'll be covering for a while to be honest, but like Mount Vesuvius, sulfur's chemistry has potential for both great beauty and great destructive power. Still, hope you'll learn something. Namely, try not to die in a volcanic explosion, although if you do, make sure someone leaves some rude graffiti on your tombstone.